I feel like I got to come clean. You know how sometimes you just got stuff that's on your mind and uh, it literally uh, encompasses the entirety of your mind. And so once you try to do other things, it's almost like that is in the way. I have got to come clean. I recently, um, you know, I feel like it's what uh, the the wild. Um, it's funny. I want to quote uh, John Travolta when he says, wickedly talented, but I can't do it and I don't sound anything like him, so it's not worth the while, but the wild and wickedly talented Whitney Cummings says, you're only as sick as the secrets you keep, so I just figure I tried to hook up with an ex recently, and it's not one of those situations where uh, I feel like the norm in that situation is you regret it, right? You wish, gosh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I wouldn't have made that mistake, and I wish I wouldn't have regrettably made that decision again and then um mine is a little bit different so instead of that i actually got rejected and so it's like uh, it, <laughs> it sits on my mind because why is it that when you get rejected by an ex it um it hurts so much more because it's like in a, i have some theories and i have some thoughts about why maybe getting rejected by an ex is more um <clears throat> of a sting so to speak than um, maybe getting getting rejected by anybody else, but I think it has to do with. And again, I have a theory. I'd be interested to see what do you guys think. Like, one, have you tried to do that? How does it go most of the time? Does it work out for you? Is it worthwhile? Because my experience has been right. It's like the. Uh, it's almost like it's the easy choice, right? It's almost like you know that in your best of days, um, or I should say, in those days, the best of you. Uh, failed at this so you you couldn't figure it out in the past you were not able to uh, you could use any analogy you want to but the point is you failed right so what would make you think that at this point you're you're going to do anything right and so oftentimes you regret it but in this situation I get re I get rejected, right? So I'm like, uh, okay, it, it, it's weird because I feel like I I went for it because it's it's supposed to be the easy, so to speak, um, the, the the easy target, right? And and maybe because of that, you you don't put in near as much effort. And I should just speak for myself. So like in the situation, I, I'm 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 around an ex. She was nice enough to buy me food. And uh, imagine a guy misinterpreting buying food <laughs> for going further uh it's normally the other way around but she's so nice she buys me food right and uh so i'm like well i guess i could try to make a move and um didn't work out and that's okay but it's weird because you you think of it right as if it's going to be like the the easy thing and you think of it oh it's funny there's a heater on behind me and i think you can literally hear it i'll be I, i'm gonna take care of this i'll be right back you were like, are, are you sure you're not next to a large uh, shirt pressing machine? Are you sure you're not next to, that's a, I don't know, we, who knows how loud those are. If I, one person in every 300 miles. Um, are, are you next to a, something that, that smashes steel together? No, I could just, I could literally hear that in my headphones. I don't know if you guys heard it. You could look back. If you didn't, I shouldn't have brought attention to it. But hey, what are you going to do? The, um, the heater behind me, I'm a little wimp, and so I have a space heater pretty much near me all the time I, I, I it seems to help me and I can't remember what I was talking about oh I was coming clean with you I was telling you guys that unfortunately I had got turned down by my ex right and so it seems like you go for and again and that's exactly where I was and then I heard the heater so I personally feel like I made that decision because it's supposed to be like the easy route, right? You think that you're going to be able to uh, obtain the goal much easier than say you would with somebody else. And it's almost like in avoiding a fear of rejection, you go for the better known path, right? You're like, I know this trail. I've, I, I've been on this ter terrain before. I can easily get through this. And, um, in my situation, you just get completely uh, turned down and rejected. And so, for instance, again, I think it almost stings more because your your expectation is one higher. But like I was saying, I didn't put any effort into it because it's just like it's almost like we know what this is. You know what I mean? We we couldn't work it out in the past. Obviously, there was a flare of some kind or another. This is not going to be. You know what I mean? This is not for the future. So. 
I feel like a terrible person, but like I said, you're only as sick as the secrets you keep, right? And I'm like, obviously that's on my mind, so I don't know. Like I said, I'd be curious to see what other people think. Have you tried that? Most of the time, and again, I think I can't put a percentage to it, but I'd be curious to see if anybody thinks they can in their relationships. Like, what is your recent rate relationship ratio? Like, do you, if you try to hook up with an ex... Again, I feel like it's like you're like, I've done this before. At least I'm not um, going out and doing something. Because sometimes, and that's what I was saying, it's like we both know what's going on. It's like sometimes you just have one goal in mind, and it's like it's almost easier to go to, to something in the past rather than, say, traversing out and getting rejected by somebody else. But because of that, because you get rejected by something that you thought was easy and you didn't put the effort into it. And I constantly speak in a way that's not addressing what I'm thinking in my head, but I'm just trying to speak for myself. Now that I get rejected in that sense, it's almost like what would be worse, like going out and getting rejected by, uh, you know what I mean, uh, anybody, anybody that, that you particularly found attractive or you were or interested in, um, or getting a, uh, turned down by somebody that you, uh, and maybe, like I said, maybe he was in, in the, the best of you, uh, couldn't figure it out at that time, and maybe it was the worst of you. But either way, they found something at you at that point in time. But I know it's not always meant to be. And again, like I said, I obviously misinterpreted it. But I think it's one of those fails that I have the instinct to rub my nose, which makes me think that I'm lying, which makes me think I'm just telling myself. But I, I guess I'd like to think that it's 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 um it's for the better, right? It's 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 meant to be, and obviously it will work out better. Because like I said, it's like a I don't know. Would you rather know that you, like you know? Uh, I have no good analogies, but the point being, I'd be curious to see what anybody else has to say. Like, uh, yeah, it just, like, like I said, I'm just not going to sit and act like I didn't and not act like I, I mean, obviously the easiest thing to say is it hurts your ego, right? Which, which we've, I, I've mentioned before, I, I feel like it's going to be a constant battle forever. Uh, something's going to try to hurt your ego and you just got to find a way to not be affected by that. But I, uh, yeah. Point being, I think it's just better to try to uh, venture new land, and if you're able to, uh, that's great. But if not, obviously you're still just going to get rejected. So it's the same. It's the same. It's the same outcome, right? And at least in this sense, again, it's not somebody that like at one time was okay <laughs> with you, and then now they're just like, ugh, what? No, God, the fuck out of here, you know? And you're like, all right, well. Um, yeah, I just think, uh, I just think that's something that hopefully I'm not the only one that's done, but most of the time when I made the mistake again, it's been where I've, yeah, where it's, yeah, you regret it. I mean, so it's almost like that's where I, I try to find all the optimism and it is like every time in my right mind, it's like, wow, that's the better choice. It's much better. But, but in, in the moment you're just like, well, I can either sit here in this instance and not make a move or I can, and the worst thing that can happen is they turn me down, but then when it actually happens, you're like, oh, uh, but that's okay. I will survive. My ego will survive, and again, I think it's more of a learning experience. You know what one thing I realized I absolutely hate is, um, I didn't realize it recently, um, it came up because like uh, I was dropping my son off. You know, they always have like, we used to call them spirit days, and every time I tell my son that, he thinks it's the dumbest thing he's ever heard, uh, but he tells me that a lot, so I must say a lot of dumb things, but you guys can attest to that. But uh, he, he says uh, uh, that he, they don't call them spirit days, but he they have PJ day, and I, I, I don't know why, but I hate PJ day like I'm I try not to be super pessimistic and I try not to be like negative but it's just like why would we just literally go out of our way to make a day where we wear our I don't typically buy clothes that are great for PJs I mean honestly I, I don't sleep in anything so like all of my PJs are basically something that I used to wear there was a time for it there was a period of time that I wore it and then the, the no longer is it applicable and so I decide to at that point it's a PJ it's a that doesn't sound right but it turns into pajamas and so it's like when I go to 
I don't know. I, I, I participate. I, I actually was really good about that stuff. Like I said, it was called like a spirit day back then. So, so I felt like I needed to get in the spirit of my school, but they don't call them that. But like I, I participated in literally one pajama day and it was cause my mom bought me a burgundy robe. I had asked for it. I wanted it forever. I had just started smoking cigars. I thought I was going to be Hugh Hefner. I was a fucking idiot. I was a teenager <laughs> and uh, she got my monogram initials on the chest, right? So I had this burgundy robe that had EY on it. So in my EY robe was the only time that I ever went to school in pajama day. But otherwise, I just can't stand it. I think it's disgusting. I don't understand it. Like literally, we're going to leave house, leave house. We're going to leave house. <clears throat> We're going to leave the house in our pajamas. And you know what's really nice? My mom actually had bought him last year some, like, um, Disney pajamas. And so those still fit him. And so that's good. But, like, like I said, otherwise, I don't typically buy pajamas. It's not something that I invest in. It's normally just like, hey, these were a pair of sweats that we used to wear. Or this was a T-shirt that we used to wear. And now it's pajamas. So t to think that that's what we're going to wear to school. And I, th I think some parents just tell their kids, they're like, no, we're not participating in pajama day. You're going to go to school looking uh, good and not like a hobo. And um, so I'd just be curious to say what, what other people do. Because, of course, I let him go in pajamas. Of course, he was there in... Yeah. You know what was another weird thing though? I went to uh I, w I went to the school and they were doing this thing where like again they're trying to do this like they don't call it spirit week but I don't know what they call it but they're like trying to celebrate consistently. Oh, it was basically because they had like um made progress on their tests. So right they're doing like tests to see like okay, at the beginning of the year you were at this point and now we're doing another test to see uh, where you are at this point. So it's called an I ready test. I don't know if that's where they're called everywhere, but basically they're called I ready tests here. So after they finish their I ready test, they're doing like a celebration. So I'm dropping them off, but like the way it works out is like I've designed my schedule where I try to get both of my workouts done. I shouldn't say I try to. I schedule it so I wake up, I do two workouts, then I wake him up, then I get him showered, then we get him breakfast, we get him dressed, and then we take him to school. Then I get ready. So when I when I take him to school, I, I look like shit. I look terrible. I mean, you're like, you're like, dude, you look like shit right now. You look like shit every time I've watched this. I don't know what you're talking about. You look like shit constantly. No, no, no. But... In the morning, I'm not like prepared to see anybody. And so, for instance, they have this, it's it's cold where I live, right? So they have a hot chocolate station in the drop-off lane. So basically in the normal place where you drop off your kids in the morning where you go by, they have a hot chocolate station. And I was like, no, uh-uh not happening. My son was all excited and I was like, no, 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 no. I am not prepared to see anybody. I'm not ready to talk to anybody. The way I've worked it out of my day, I smell like cold vomit. I smell like dog shit. I literally just got done working out. I look disgusting. I was like, no, I go a hundred yards past the drop off lane, drive up and around the lady from the hot cocoa station that runs up to my car and I see her coming up behind me in my rear view mirror, not, not in my rear view mirror, my side view mirror. And I'm just like, no, I'm not ready to see anybody. I'm so angry. And I just was like, is anybody else like this? Like, do you, I guess the easy thing, like for instance, my son had a, uh, a dentist appointment. I've talked about it a million times. He, it was like a scheduled at the, at the one time then he added, it was just a big deal because it's like, how often are you going to have to do that? He had like a large dental procedure and we had to take him in and stuff. But my point in saying that is his mom scheduled it for 545 in the morning. Like, was I like, oh, no, I can't make it there. You know, and that's much earlier than I have to be to school. So, like, I came there fully prepared. But in the often times, I'm not running into anybody when I drop him off. So at this point, I've scheduled it where I can do my workouts and then I drop him off and then I come home and get ready. And that's just what has, you know, shower and shave basically. So that's what's worked out for me. And, um, not in this case, man. I just, I, I don't know why. I just, I, you, I'd be curious to see what other people say. Like, does that make you mad? Like, does it get you upset if somebody comes and like, uh, 
Because normally, like, say they came to your door, you just wouldn't answer it, right? Or, like, if somebody's looking at you in their car, it's like, eh, fuck it. They're going to see me for, like, two seconds, and then they're not going to see me anymore. So it's, like, no big deal. But in this case, I went 100 yards around the drop-off lane. The lady from the hot chocolate station saw that I didn't get in the drop-off lane, and she goes all the way up to my car, and she's like, thank you so much for your support. You know, it's like, it again, <laughs> it's supposed to be a great thing, but... If I smell like cold vomit and I'm disgusting and I just got done working out and I just don't expect to see anybody. Like, even my point in saying is, like, I haven't done my hair. I haven't, like, put hair gel in, which, I mean, maybe is a, is a debate on whether or not that's necessary. But I, I personally just like to, before I go greet the public, not... Just like I just said, on PJ Day, I don't like to look like trash. I don't like to look like a hobo. I don't like to look like I... I can't even get that sentence out. That's nice. That's good. That's what it sounded like to me. I don't know what it sounded like to you guys. I was trying to say I don't like to look like, but... You know what's one thing I noticed recently is that, like... I... When I'm anxious, I find myself uh, again. These are the I was I was coming clean with the things that have been on my mind, but then I realize when I have these things running through my mind and I'm trying to come up with theories of why I did something or why something happened, um, it just seems like when I'm anxious, I I am just not present at all. Like I'll be brushing my teeth and I will just like realize that like it's been it's been minutes and minutes it's been 15 20 minutes and i just been standing there in space just 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 brushing and brushing and brushing and brushing and it's like literally it seems like the more anxious i am and the more up in my head i am i'm just sitting there brushing my teeth so if my teeth look good just know that i've been i've been tripping out no i'm just kidding that's dumb that's a stupid thing to say but um probably been tripping out about pj day at school or tri tripping out about that it's just one of the stupid decisions i tried to make try to hook up with an ex but no i won't keep bringing that up it felt good to bring it up it felt good to mention it one of the things that had been bothering me too. Like one of the days when I found myself is just like, so I work in construction and um, basically what I had done is like years ago, it was actually really nice. Like I was actually a service tech in like uh, 2014, 2015. So uh, six and seven years ago, seven years ago, I guess it is now I'm bad at math, but um, I would actually get work orders. So for instance, a salesperson would go meet with a customer and they would, uh, b b at that point I worked for a different company. So that company would say really basic things. They would literally just say like, this is what you need to do. And it was my job to interpret that, find the, find the materials, uh, f go diagnose it and find out what I needed to do. Well, basically I don't I don't work for that company anymore so there's a different st standard operating procedure which is fine but like in this case I will um I'm on the other side so like now I'm the individual that goes and I meet with the homeowner and I create the work order and I tell them but like rather than the other company where like they would just leave it super broad we have to we have to be very specific so like I have to say every exact material exactly how much I'm going to buy and exactly how much I think it's going to take you to install, which is like, it makes sense that I have to do that because in order to make the bid, I have to look up the material. I have to look up the cost. I have to, I have to put the labor on there of how long it's going to take you to do it. So it's like, I already have all the information. It's not like it's a big deal. I already do that, but it would they make us be much more detailed like they make us really go in like step by step this is exactly what's going to happen and like recently some of the guys they'll just be like like um i'm trying to think of a specific example i met with a customer and so like i went out there and he was like hey uh, you know we have a leak on a roof so I looked at the leak and I told them what we could do to fix the leak. The leak had uh, leaked down and messed up their uh, the fascia. So basically the fascia is that area that holds your rain gutter. So typically on your house you have an area where your rain gutter is hanging and that's typically on a board um, or some sort of like, uh, you know, vertical, uh, sometimes metal, but oftentimes a board and it's going to be hanging on there. And so that had also got messed up. So he was like, hey, in the process, can you guys remove the soffit? And... Um, the soffit is that area that like if you look at a house you have like the wall right and then there's the rain gutter well in between the wall and the rain gutter there's a vertical area 
so like a, basically it goes up the wall and then it's vertical and then the rain gutter is there he was like can you guys remove and replace that while you guys are here and he, he i was like yeah of course you know it's super easy basically the tools are already on site the ladders are already up super easy to take care of I think he even asked me at one point, he was like, if I tried to do that in the future, would it cost more? And I'm like, yeah, because exactly like I just said, the, the, the materials already, the, the guys are already on site. So the trip charge is there. We've already ordered the material. So any cost that we're going to get from the supplier is already there. It's literally just the extra material and the extra labor. So I'm like, yeah, of course we can remove and replace the soft foot while we're out here. And yeah, it will cost you more if you try to do it in the future. And so we offer to remove and replace it. I come to checking in on the job and I'm ready to do the invoice. Because again, I'm lucky enough that nowadays I don't have to do that. And so I, I, I call and I go, you know, how did everything go? And she's like, well, the guys didn't remove and replace the soffit. And I was like what like why that's so weird you know what i mean like if i get uh, again our work orders were very broad but if i got a work order that said remove and replace soffit i would just remove and replace the soffit i wouldn't really i i mean i guess there's there's some independent thinking to be done but it's pretty straightforward as to what needs to be taken care of and so basically i just I, I called the guys and they were like, it didn't need to be done. They were like, uh, it, and I was like, I didn't say this, but my thoughts are, I didn't ask you if it needed to be done. I didn't ask you to go out and diagnose it. I went out there. I spent time with the customer. I diagnosed it. They asked me if I would be able to add this into the project. I told them I could do it. And now you guys have finished the project and you didn't do it. So it's like now we either send them out and it's like the customer's okay with that. But of course, when we're doing their invoice, they're like, hey, can, can you take off the removal of this? And can you take off the replacement of this? And can you take off the material for this? And so it's like, of course. But it almost just seems like why not do the job the way we, we organized it? Like... I just can't imagine, like, if somebody gave me something and they were like, hey, this is what I sold to the customer and this is what I promised to him, and I was just like, meh, that doesn't need to be done. And, and so, again, it's like it's, it's if it was anything to, to complain about, it'd be something to talk about with my bosses, but doesn't it just feel like sometimes at work where if you if you were the one that complaining, then you become the problem? So it's like if you notice that, and I mean I'm not going to use real names or anything. I was going to use examples from your work. So it's like if you notice that Billy and Bobby are messing up and you're the one constantly complaining about what Billy and Bobby are doing, don't you become the problem after a while? After a while, aren't they like, <clears throat> man, Ethan's always complaining. All he does is complain. All he does is talk about what, and so it's just like I don't want to be, I don't want to be the negative guy. I don't want to be the guy being like, hey, I don't think this guy's, you know, doing what they should because, of course, I appreciate them. Like, and these guys have worked at the company longer than I have. You know what I mean? So, like, I almost think, I, I shouldn't say I think, I know they're valued higher than I am. But it's just like, it's one of those situations where it's like, when I'm brushing my teeth and I'm staring off in space, I'm just thinking, like, how do you get a work order that says remove and replace this? And then, like, there was another situation where, again, that's just one of those situations where it's like, I feel like, okay, they didn't know. They thought that it was, well, is this bad? Is it full of water? Is it waterlogged? Is it um, delaminated? Is it destroyed? Is there reason to remove and replace it? And they determined that there wasn't. They didn't realize that the homeowner had talked to me and asked, hey, if I try to do this in the future, is it going to cost me more? And I'm like, yeah, it should. Because, you know, you have to pay for a trip charge and typically somebody else will come out and diagnose it again. And so it's like, if you just add in one piece of material and a couple extra screws while somebody's already got their material on site, they already got all their tools out, they already got their ladder up, it should cost less. But again, that's just theoretical and just from having done it. But um, I can't remember where I was going with that anymore, and that's okay. But, oh, yeah, I was just going to say there was that other story. So, like, in that situation, it's, like, almost like, okay, they didn't realize that they shouldn't reorganize what I've already organized with the homeowner. But then, like, so, so that happens. So then, 
excuse me, that happens. So there's like another situation where I just basically say, uh, I, I'm a very specific. I just say, please remove this material, install this material, remove this amount of footage, install this amount of footage, use these materials. And then they call me that day and they go, this is not the same material. And I'm like, no, I said that. I wrote that in the work order. That's exactly what I said. I said, remove this material and install this material. I didn't say that they were the exact same thing. And they're like, well, can you come out here? And I'm like, of course. I'm getting ready to run into an appointment. But as soon as I get done, I'll meet you guys over to there. It'll be like 11 a.m. And then they end up calling me and telling me not to come. But basically, they <laughs> reanalyzed the situation. They went out there. They said, uh, the, the, when I looked and sold it to them, it was weeks before the job was actually scheduled and they were on site. So the inventories could have changed. But at the time that I looked, there was no, oh, actually, I should say they didn't find it either. So at the time I looked, the material that we needed wasn't available. When they looked, the material wasn't available either. They know a material, basically we needed a smooth material and they had a textured material. So they just turn over the textured material and use the smooth side. Um, so like the side it's not made for, but it is smooth, so it gets the job done. But my point is, I organized with the customer that we were going to install this material because we discussed that due to supply chain issues, that was not available. And then they they just completely redecided. So so my whole thought is like, why do I write? detail I, I'm, I'm gonna keep doing it <laughs> it doesn't matter but i'm just like why do i write these detailed things about what to do when they're gonna go out there re-diagnose it re-come up with the strategy re-come up with the material list re-research the material re-go get it and like in this situation we live in like one town and the job was in another town and the place I told them to pick up the materials was on the way. So they didn't pick up the materials on the way, went to the job, and the materials they found were an hour and a half drive away. <laughs> and so it was round trip, so 45 minutes there, 45 minutes back. But it's just like, I asked him, I was like, how long do you think it's going to take? And so it's like now... He says it's going to take him, say, 24 hours was his estimate. And say, when I put the estimate together, I only thought it would take him 16 hours. So my thought is, if we're only going to net the same amount of money in, in 16 hours, if we did it my way, or do it in 24 hours if we do it your way, isn't it technically better for the company to net that amount of revenue over 16 hours? Both ways, we're not using exactly the perfect material. But both ways were satisfying the customer, and both ways were doing a job that is well done. It's just one material is not available, so you have to use something else that looks similar. I chose fiber cement. They chose uh, fiber board. So it was honestly, in my opinion, a small difference, but they didn't want to install fiber cement board. So I know it sounds stupid, but I guess it's just like... That's why when I'm sitting there like brushing my teeth and it takes me 25 minutes, it's because I'm just thinking through things like that. And then, of course, the mistakes I made. Um, yeah, but I think if you if you come up with a good strategy as to why you've done these stupid things, it's like, all right. And I guess, again, in that case, I, I don't necessarily feel like I'm the one that's done the stupid things. I'm still going to write the work orders and I'm still going to come up with the materials but in this case it's like I pretty much know now every time they're going to go back out and reanalyze and read come up with new materials so it's like I guess you know it almost seems unfair to the customer because it's like if I can offer you this job in 16 hours if they just do what I say or they come out and do it in 24 hours you know I guess either the company makes less money or or um, or, or they just, you know, we have to do it the way they want it. I don't know. I don't know what to say, <laughs> but anyway, point being, it feels good to, to, to get it over with. And, um, it just seems silly, but, um, uh, either way, I feel like it was possible. And I feel like the only way to really quantify it would be to break it down in, in profitability. So for instance, um, the only unfortunate thing is, is we don't have a control group, right? Because like we didn't ever actually break down my job we never did the job the way i wanted to with the materials i wanted to from start to finish and then we didn't we just did it the way they wanted to so we don't really have a control group to compare so we'll just get the profitability of their job and again i think if i'm just not being dumb it seems like if they spend 24 hours on a 24 man hours on a job i bid at 16 man hours the profitability is probably going to be low but that's okay you don't win all of them but um 
I'd just be curious to see if anybody else does that. Do you guys ever catch yourself like 25 min, min, minutes into brushing your teeth and you're just like literally in space thinking about something that happened at work? Uh, is there anything that's been bugging you recently about work? Because it's not been it's not been bugging me. It's just been on my mind. It's one of those things to say I've been easily thinking about and trying to theorize and find out what the best solution is. But again, I think the best solution is just continue putting the work orders together the best I can, continue putting the materials together the best I can, continue doing the estimates the best I can, and, um, you know, I'll learn every time. But I'll be right back with you guys. So I am back. I really don't think that either of those things are really that big of a deal. I appreciate you guys letting me come and clean about them. I feel like, uh, th again, everybody probably has an next story, and I hope you guys are willing to share one that's good. And uh, I feel like everybody's got a probably story that's happened at work where – something's probably happened and uh somebody's probably done something wrong but it is what it is well it's funny because uh it's almost like which side are you on because like in their interpretation i've chose the wrong material but i purposefully chose that material because the exact material wasn't available you're like please please stop please stop talking about that please stop talking about what happened at work but my point was just that i appreciate you guys letting me get it off my chest appreciate you guys letting me talk about it i think it's something that happens to everybody it's not anything to make too big of a deal about um probably everybody's got some sort of story i just find myself up in my head doing silly things like brushing my teeth for a year like the other day i was literally putting pepperonis under my sink and i was like I, I, it's almost like i came to right like i'm just so far on autopilot and all of a sudden i just i'm like what am i doing you know, like basically where I keep the trash bags, like I mean, everybody probably keeps something different under their kitchen sink, but I keep the trash bags under there typically and I'm getting ready to put the pepperonis under there. You're like, that's because that's where they belong. They belong in the trash, you filthy pig. That's actually why you were doing that. Your instinct was to put them down by the trash bags because it's disgusting. You sick bastard. I can't believe you feed that to your children. No, uh, I just, yeah, sometimes I come to and I find myself completely in space and it's like... I guess it's better when I'm brushing my teeth, but thanks for letting me get that stuff off my chest. I hope you guys have some good stories, and I hope you have some good stories of what you've caught yourself doing when you... The worst thing, I mean, I feel like one of the one of the things that's pretty common, but unfortunately one of the worst things is when you're driving, right? When you all of a sudden you're just like at your destination, and you barely remember the trip. You barely remember going there because you're just completely out of your mind, either in your head or something like that. Just reminders, reminders for me that I'm not being present, reminders for me that I need to be more in the moment um, when I'm like, gosh. But uh, like I said, I think one of the biggest things is just getting it, getting it out. It, you know what I mean? If it's going through your head and you're trying to just comprehend the choices made by some other people and you're never really going to know exactly the answer, even if you talk to them, you just have to take their word. So I just feel like uh, it's one of those things that it's better just to talk about. And especially if it's making you feel weird. You know, I was curious, have you guys had to do, um, I, I thought it was called like a Chattis survey, but I think that uh, it's actually just the the business is called Chattis. So basically when I had to take my son in for that dental appointment, he, um, of course I had to take him to the doctor first. So like his mom had elected to have him put out. And originally I thought that was bad because I didn't know much about it. And imagine that I didn't have enough information and I made a poor decision but uh, his mom decided to have him put out so we had to take him to the doctor and I was thinking like what are they gonna do you know I'm like thinking I'm like when they checked my heart in the past where it, basically I was like went to my doctor because I was like I think something's wrong with me and so he sends me to get an EKG I'm like I think something's wrong with my heart and um, he, um, I, he <laughs> it took me so long to get the appointment scheduled that to get in line that eventually I actually went in there with my newborn baby so I literally had like one of those baby carriers in there i'm like i'm so sorry for doing this and he called it a novelty which after researching it i think he meant that it doesn't happen very often but i'd be interested to see if i misinterpreted that but basically in retrospect i was having a new kid and i <laughs> never been a real dad like i was a, a stepdad which is bullshit but I was a stepdad or whatever at the time. And um, no, I was basically just somebody's boyfriend that had a kid. You know what I mean? Which is honestly the situation most of the time. But um, I was um, 
worried. I was anxious. You know what I mean? So like I found myself like having cold sweats at night and like being super anxious. And uh, like I said, by the time I finally got into the doctor uh, to have an EKG, to have him look at my heart, um, I actually had my kid with me. So I had my son with me. So it must've been 2014 because that's when he was born. But, um, they had to look at his heart. So I'm thinking like, what do they have to do to my seven year old son that, if you're going to put him under, obviously you have to check and make sure that his heart's good or something, but they literally just listen to it. It's no big deal. She was like, this is no big deal. But having to have him put under was kind of, kind of scary. I mean, it's one of those things you almost don't want to see with your kids. And it's weird. They have this, they call it the jitters. <clears throat> I'm sorry for clearing my throat, but I'd be curious to see if anybody has had to, um, do that with their kids if they've had to put their kids under for any reason in this case it was a dental surgery but like right when they put them under they call it the jitters and I almost think it's like your instinctual reaction to like fight going under to like fight losing control like right before you go under like they said kids more often than adults I guess because adults have maybe come to terms with it but kids like and he did he kind of just you start to like move your arms and kind of want to and some doctors probably like you're a fucking idiot there's a complete reason for the jitters but I just saw him like we're trying to fight it you know what I mean like almost like when you have a trip coming on and you want to somebody tries to fight it like they don't don't move with it they just like don't let it happen they try to fight what's happening and I feel like because he'd never been put under before he was almost like fighting it but um, the only reason I'm even saying any of this is because like beforehand I had to fill out this survey so like he had to go to a doctor appointment so they could check on him and again it wasn't very serious they just listened to his heart and stuff but I was just curious if any other parents have had to fill out this survey because it's like a, it, again it was called Chattis so the company was just Chattis but it was asking questions and I had to write them down because I barely remember any of them but it was like um, ha, uh, I guess I should find the place where I wrote them down yeah but it was like um, questions like is he fidgety um does he refuse to share and i'm like thinking things like well obviously the answer is sometimes i mean if you had to answer a survey about your kid and they were like are they fidgety or do they refuse to share like hasn't there been an instance where any parent could say that their child has been fidgety or an instance where any parent could say that their child has been refusing to share with them and I'm just thinking what in the holy uh, really I'm thinking what the fuck what the fuck does this have to do with my son why in the world do I have to answer this why in the world do you need to know is my son fidgety and the reason why I'm poor. I'm always poor. For some reason, that's a nice running thing in my life. But there was a time where I was, say, I guess a different level of poor, right? And um, I tried to do that plasma thing. So for people don't, that don't know, there's this thing where you can, like, try to donate plasma, right? <clears throat> when I tried to donate plasma, I filled out the survey really honestly. I think it was some question like, have you ever had chest pains? And I was like, yeah. I've had chest pains, of course, you know what I mean? Like, it's funny, I can think of a time where this girl, I was trying to sit on her in a chair when I was like probably my son's age, and she launched me with her feet, she had her feet on my ass, and she pushed me across the room, and I went into this table, and it literally, the side of the table, the corner of the table, lodged into my chest, and my mom, or excuse me, not my mom, my grandma, just gave me an ice pack to put over it, she's like, hey, just put some ice over it, I literally still have that scar on my chest, <laughs> this day um but uh why am i talking about that why am, oh yeah my point in saying that is is like they're like have you ever had chest pains and i was like well yeah of course I, like for, for instance that's just one story i can think about where my chest is hurt and they were like oh yeah you can't give plasma you're never going to be able to give plasma and they, it's like this is an issue like i was almost better off like I don't know if the stories were true, but people would talk about like how they'd have huge, disgusting, bruise looking things on their arm. Like basically the plasma thing didn't go right. And then so they'd have like basically where uh, the, the sight went all nasty and stuff. So I almost feel like I dodged a bullet with that. But um, I've had situations where I fill out these surveys and I be super honest, almost 
thinking like, well, this is this is the correct answer. Like, obviously, the answer is this. And then it's completely misinterpreted. Or like one time I went to a doctor. I didn't even realize I was going for that. I was thought I was going in for something else. But they had me fill out. It was a one page survey. I want to say it had between five and six questions on it. And I filled out these five and six questions. And they were like, you're diagnosed as ADD. And I'm like, bullshit like I'm sorry but no you know what I mean even I probably do like somebody told me that when I had taken you know how people I don't recommend anybody do this but there was a time when I was younger where people that had medicine that maybe they didn't want to use would share it with other people and so for instance I'd tried I think it was like uh, Ritalin and whatever else that other I think it starts with an A I don't know why I can't think of it but I but basically there's these ADHD drugs and when I would take them it would just make me really focused and people have said if that <laughs> happens it's because you actually do have ADD but my point in saying this is sometimes I feel like in my past I fill out surveys super duper honestly and it's just fucked me like it's fucked me where people are like you now have ADD and I'm like no I'm not I'm not moving forward as that I'm not I'm not doing that I'm sorry and maybe it's my ego maybe it's my refusal to not address that but it's like I'm not going to say that that's the truth. And again, with the plasma part, I probably got lucky. It was probably better off. It was better that I had to find some way to actually make money at that point and not be able to just go donate plasma and get like, fuck, dude, it, it's insane. <laughs> I was just about to think about it. I, It was so many years ago. It was probably over 10 years ago. So who knows what they pay people now. But back then, I think it was like 45 bucks and people would say it would take like three hours. So you're getting paid like $15 an hour to let somebody drain a bunch of stuff out of your body. It's just like, I can't imagine doing that. That's absolutely insane at this point. I guess I'm just not that desperate right now. But yeah, my thought is it probably worked out for the better when it happened. But um, I just was like, I was almost fearful that if I if I fill out this survey and say things like, yeah, he's refused to share before. Yeah, he's been fidgety at times that for some reason now they're going to. So so I lied. Uh, oh, I, I, yep, I probably shouldn't have admitted that. It's probably bad to admit that. But I'd just be curious to see, has anybody else had to fill out a survey like this? What was the instances? And maybe you can't share that. But like I said, I was just going for an appointment where they had to put him under at the dentist. So we went to the doctor to check on him. And I'm at this doctor appointment and they had to fill out this survey. And I'm just like, what does any of this have to do? You're like, dude, if he's fidgety when they put him under, that could be a, a, a big issue. But again, no, they called. They said that happens every time. So I'm just trying to think of what criticism somebody would say because maybe there's some super easy answer. But obviously, if I knew it, I wouldn't be mentioning it. Obviously, if I knew it, I wouldn't be saying, well, well why do I have to fill this out? But also, I guess it's just fear like that it would be misinterpreted, that somebody would misunderstand like... <sighs> Can you imagine a situation where a child has never, ever refused to share? Can you imagine a situation where a child in their life from, 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 I was going to say spawn, which are we playing PS4? What the hell's going on, man? What are you talking about? From birth. If, if from birth, your child had never once ever in their life refused to share, like that's crazy, right? Every parent would be like, yes, that's, that's, you teach them sharing. That's how you teach them sharing. But again, my point is just too many times in my life, I'm filling out what seems like some simple survey and then my life has changed. Hopefully for the better each time, certainly for the better, at least one, th one of the examples, but. I'd be curious to see what you guys think. Have you had to fill out those surveys? Have you had to fill out different things at the doctor that you've never had to fill out before? You know what I've realized? How mad do people get when you stop at a stop sign? They're like, of all the choices you could make, of all the things you could do at this crossroads in your life, this is blasphemy. Why would you choose to, to stop your car? It's insane. And he, there was this one time, a long time ago. I don't remember exactly what the situation is. I think I was picking up my son's mother from a hotel in Denver. But I don't exactly remember. I went to a stop sign. 
There was nobody on the road whatsoever. So point being nobody behind me, nobody on the road that I was coming up to cross street with. I didn't completely stop at the stop sign. I came up to it and I didn't stop all the way. I turned the corner. If I would not have stopped my car, I would have ran over a police officer. So a police officer walked off of the sidewalk into the road with a ticket that all he had to do was put my license plate on. It was almost like he had everything filled out, like he was going to spend his entire day just standing right at that stop sign. And I got a ticket, and I had to deal with that. So ever since then, I come to 100% complete stops. I've heard cops refer to them as rocking stops. So for instance, your car has to come to a complete stop. It rocks forward and then it rocks back. Whereas if you, if you just tap on your brakes, you, when you stop, you tap and then you go forward where the rocking stop, you know, you've come to a complete stop because it rocks forward and it rocks back. So I do that every time. If you, if you pay attention to the people behind you, they're like throwing their hands up in the air. They literally can't believe like why in the world you would stop at a stop sign. And I just, I'm curious if anybody else has a deal with this. Like, are you the guy that's like, I literally had my cousin tell me one time, dude, no cop, no stop. No cop. I guess that's how he talks. I don't know. I just don't agree with it. So I guess I make some stupid imitation, but he said, no cop, no stop. But in that instance, do you think I knew that a cop was going to walk off of the curb and stand in the road and write me a ticket? Give me a citation for not stopping at the, at the stop sign. Another thing is, I don't know if you guys have driven these new cars and my first experience with it was in rental cars. So if you're in a rental car, it's almost like you don't give a shit, right? Like the, the car can do whatever. You're like, I've, I, I'm just using this for six days. I don't give a shit. I don't care what's going to happen to it. I don't care what goes wrong with it. But when it's my own car, like it does that. Um, I don't know what it's called. It's like automatic stop, automatic start, whatever it is. When you come to a rocking stop. So literally I'll be stopping in a stop sign. Like I'm just talking about and my engine turns off like it, it, as if my car thinks that because I have come to a complete stop at the stop sign, that's a good time to cut the engine off. And I'm just going to hang out here with the engine off for the rest of the day. I don't understand that. It's wonderful. These new features that they have on the cars, but like it, sometimes I forget, right? Sometimes I forget that, Oh, I have eight seconds before my car is actually going to go. And I don't know if you've ever been sitting at a stoplight and it takes you eight seconds after the light turns green to fucking go. But the people behind you are raging. They are ready to move their asses. They don't care about what you have going on. So by then I'm like jamming down on my accelerator. I have the accelerator completely jammed down because for some reason in my monkey brain, when the car doesn't move when the car doesn't respond when I want it to I just keep pushing down so then the car jerks back it, it, the, the torque just completely jerks back because somehow once the car engages I push the accelerator down so far because it hasn't responded in over five seconds that it, it but my point is if you're in a rental it's like no big deal and that was my first experience with that for forever now it's my car and it drives me crazy like why when I come to a stop sign or a stoplight does my engine need to turn off every time I, I guess if you're in I don't even I don't even think that's a good I was gonna say if you're in New York or California but I don't even think New York's a good idea because when I was there people drove crazy they didn't drive in just the lanes they drove in bike lanes they drove everywhere they drove honking they were jamming their accelerators like I don't even think that's a good example it doesn't matter. It's all good. I just, I, I, it's like I, some of these new, some of these new features in the car, like the, sometimes for instance, the road won't be perfectly lined. So like sometimes they're doing construction or sometimes they're, and have you ever had like that lane assist, grab your arms and just like jerk you completely to the side. You're just, I, 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 I love it. But at the same time, it's like some of these things I'm like, I, if I was, if I was going out of my lane and you were able to lane assist and keep me where I was going, that's amazing. That's fantastic. And I really appreciate that. And, and the fact that if there was a bunch of cars running at every red light all the time, it's going it to damage the atmosphere. I understand that. So trying to turn them off, but I don't know how much gas it's really saving. I don't know how, 
if, if you turn if, if I come to a stop sign and you turn my engine off and now I have to wait eight seconds for my car to turn back on, engage and let me accelerate again. I don't know how that's the biggest help because again, most people just think you're insane. Most people, like I said in the beginning, complain when I just come to an actual stop at a stop sign. I stop at a stop sign and they're like, what in the fuck is wrong with you? How could you possibly, how could you possibly do this? So, 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 so when your car turns off, it completely turns off, then has eight seconds to restart, people lose their, and maybe I should just not give a shit, and maybe it's me, maybe I'm really just losing my own mind, and I project that people are losing their mind behind them, but you can see sometimes, you can see at least the hands when people are like, what are you doing? Why do you, I don't want to scream into the mic. I don't want to, I don't know. I always tell my son he's going to hurt his voice. He tries to do venom. He tries to like pretend like he's, uh, you know, that uh, I never let him watch it. I never let him look at it. But of course, we've all seen the commercials. And you know, it's like that really deep voice, almost like the Batman voice. And I'm like, dude, you're going to hurt your voice. I, I heard that, that Christ, Christian Bale, when he did Batman, heard his voice trying to do that awful voice. I shouldn't say awful voice. It's just a super deep voice. So it's like harsh on your vocal cords. And my son always tries to do venom. And I'm like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt your voice. But that's why I didn't scream. That's why I didn't try to imitate that. Can you squeeze that water bottle? Can you just, can you get the loudest water bottle that you can and just squeeze the shit out of it, man? That's what we're really looking for. It seems like every time I sit down, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but I have to adjust my balls. And I'm just curious, is this normal? Does everybody else, like basically, if you sit down in your car and you don't grab your balls, are you going to like literally hurt your back? Because I think I got like 30 seconds before if I don't grab them, move them, and adjust them, that I'm literally going to have back pain in like an amount of seconds. And like I used to feel really bad about it because I guess it looks weird. Like, you know, for instance, you jump in the car with your mom and you reach down your pants and move your balls around. It's like maybe it could be uncomfortable or anywhere. You know what I mean? But I have to do it. I just, I'm I wondering if I'm the only one. I'd be curious to see if guys can, can share that with me. Like, do you literally, it's like, I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to squash them. And I, I feel weird about it, but I have to do it. I don't know what the answer is. Like if I sit in a car, and I don't adjust them, instinctually, my back doesn't go where it's supposed to go. It's like your body is protecting you because it's like if you put all the pressure down on your back like you should, you're going to crush the shit out of your ball sack. So you should probably pull that up and out of there before you sit down. But then it's like I feel like a total, you know when you feel even weirder? Well, I shouldn't say I feel weird, but I've, I've considered it. I've thought about it. I do yoga at my house by myself, right? But I was always like, when you're moving in these poses, sometimes, again, I have to adjust. I have to move around. Otherwise, it's going to be weird. And I was always like, if I was in a class and I was reaching down my pants every time to adjust and move, it's just like sometimes if it's laying the wrong direction or like it's in between your legs, it's like you have to do something. And so I just, I did, is this acceptable? Is this, uh, I'm just in fear because I do it in my own home. And I, I did, it was like, if I ever decide to do yoga with other people, which is, I think what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to to share <laughs> these experiences but maybe i just been listening to it too literally maybe that's just not what it means maybe it's just talking about your life you're supposed to like share this universe with other people maybe it's talking about all the above i don't know but uh, sometimes i feel weird about it so i don't know you know my son uh, his he got somebody at his school that told him he could jungle drills and it's like my immediate my immediate response is like nobody can juggle drills there's not a child at your elementary school that can juggle drills. But my mom, and I don't mean to always talk about my mom, I guess it's one of those things that, uh, again, I feel silly about it, but there's probably people out there that if you've lost a parent or you've lost somebody, it's like you should soak up all of the moments that you can with your parent while you have them. So um, now I don't remember what I was talking about because I had to justify the fact that I'm like, oh, my mommy, I talked to my mommy and... um yeah, I felt so self-conscious about that, and I tried to s justify it that I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. 
Breck has a kid at his school that tried to that told him that he he can juggle drills, and so Brad's Breck's excited. He's like, "Hey, yeah, I think he saw me using mine or something." That's just me trying to pretend I'm manly. I'm just trying to I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he saw me using a drill, <clears throat> so uh, you know he had to tell me a story about his. No, I don't remember how it came up. It's a total lie. I don't. I, it's, I don't know why I said that. Um, I'd like to think I'd, I'd like to think that's how it happened, but. I can't particularly remember. So my kid has this kid, my kid has this kid at his school that tells him he can juggle drills, and I'm thinking like that's bullshit. That's not true. The kid's a liar. You shouldn't hang out with that kid anymore. But my my mom thinks that you can't. She told me, and I think it's I I almost think it's completely misinterpreted because I think I heard like Dax Shepard say it years ago, but he was talking in a totally different sense. And so my mom will say like. You can't deny his reality. I mean, it's not fair to deny his reality. And maybe she's learned things. And, and, and I agree. Like, that sounds right. Like, I hear it and I'm like, okay, that's great. So, like, I'm sitting there, like, trying to work with him. Like, all right, well, these got to be cordless drills, right? Because, like, if he's, if, he's, if he's throwing up corded drills, the, the cords are going to be ripping around like crazy, right? So, they at least have to be corded cordless they're gonna be cordless drills so okay so so this kid you know anywhere between if he's at Breck school 6 to 12 so there's a kid from 6 to 12 that's juggling drills they got to be cordless because obviously the cords would be what so then you would think would you put the battery in would you put the battery in the cordless drill I think it would provide better better weight as far as like when you're throwing it, it's going to be a lot easier because it's going to be more evenly weighted. Whereas if you don't have the battery in it, the bottom's going to be really light, the bottom where the battery's supposed to go, and the top is going to be really heavy. So it's going to have a different. But anyway, so so obviously you would think if they have the batteries in them, they're going to be. I mean, I don't know how much a drill weighs, but you have to like have some strong ish arms. And, and so he's telling me, so, so I'm, I'm trying to work through this. I'm like, okay, so the kids got three cordless drills. <clears throat> maybe they have battery packs in them. Maybe they don't. Obviously he's got, he's got really strong forearms. He's got Popeye forearms. That's dumb. I, I didn't say that. That's not what I thought. I shouldn't. I'm an idiot. I don't know why I said that. It, <sighs> You would just have to have strong arms. You would just, at least your arms would have to be strong enough to be able to catch a drill repeatedly and throw it again, right? So it's like, I'm trying to work through this with my kid, but like, where do you, where do you stop it? Where do you draw the line? You know what I mean? Like, am I, I feel like I'm really good at being way too literal with something. Like, so for instance, maybe when my mom says something like, and I'm not going to, she says, don't deny his reality. Maybe that's not what she means. Maybe she doesn't mean when a kid tells him he can juggle juggle drills, but I don't know. I just feel like the trajectory of those drills without the battery is going to be really weird, and for the kid to try to catch them over and over again is going to be nearly impossible, unless he's got some superhuman strength. And so it's just like, when do you get to step in? When what what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> like, why can I not tell my son that? The kid at school is lying to your face. You should not listen to what he says. I almost think that's a better lesson to learn. I almost think it's better for him to realize that, hey, every time somebody talks, they're, they're, they, they're not always telling the truth. Every time somebody speaks to you, they may not be telling you the truth. Because there are times when people tell you things that may or may not be inaccurate and um i'd just be curious to see if you guys have any good stories there are probably probably better ones out there like if your kid has ever gone to school and came back with some story about some kid and you had to break it to him like okay jimmy doesn't jimmy can't fly jimmy's a fucking idiot jimmy can't you know what i mean like or with obviously that's not what happened with me and as a bad example this is not the 1950s nobody names their kid jimmy you'd call him james right or his i guess his name would be james you may call him jim it doesn't Nobody, what, what, am I, what am I talking about? What in the world am I talking about? Um, yeah. Does your kid ever come home with stories from kids that are full of shit? And you just, like, have to break that to them. You have to be like, you know, I don't know. I guess better that they learn. Um, I don't know. My son's super picky. He's super picky about everything. I have to be particular about, like, the way I put food on his plate. I don't know. I'm kind of like that in some ways. Like, do you guys eat like the little butthole on the banana? Do you eat like the, you know what I'm talking about? Like if you, 
I would consider it the bottom of the banana because I even had like one time when I was plumbing, this guy told me, he was like, why are you opening that wrong? And I was like, I, I think this is how the monkeys do it. It's like, I think this is how the monkeys open it. I think they open it on the bottom, right? Like where the little butthole is. So like when I open it, I always take off that little part. I know it doesn't connect to the... If you know what I'm talking about, at the bottom of a banana, there's like this little like pointy thing. And then so the banana, in order to go onto that like little pointy thing, it has to have like a hole in it. And I just feel gross eating that. But you know what's a funny thing? That same job where that guy made fun of me, the guy that was in, um, so, so that guy was a supervisor. Um, the other gentleman that was on the crew I had went to school with, he's the one that actually got me the job. And um, he was training me, and I remember asking him one time. It was actually a pipe insulator. So, like, I was using pipe insulators when we were installing them because, like, sometimes when you have, like, say, a pipe going through wood, it doesn't just uh, – they don't just leave it, like, in the hole with, like, the pipe just between the wood. Sometimes you put a pipe insulator in there. Sometimes you fire fire stop it or fire cock it as well. So there's a number of things you could do. But, say, in this in this particular instance, I was like, oh, God damn it, I'm going to lose my train of thought because I'm talking about fire cock. Why the fuck am I talking about that? But um, in this particular instance, we uh, we we had to use pipe insulators. So he's, I was like, hey man, what are these called? You know what I mean? In case I need to, uh, in case I need to find this, because he's training me. So I was like, hey, what are these called? He's like, those are called buttholes. And I was like, that that seems a little weird. That seems weird that, that they would call them that. But um, he's like, no nah, man, doesn't it? It kind of it looks like a butthole, right? It made me think. You know, it doesn't matter. And so I'm like, okay, you know, like I didn't ask any more questions. And then like weeks later, I'm working with a different crew. I'm working with like a bunch of different guys. And I'm like, hey, where, do, where are the buttholes at? Where Do you guys know where I can find the buttholes? And they're like, what you do on your personal time is not going to interfere with work. Do you understand? And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like I, Bradley told me, uh, the butthole. He's like, I whatever you and Bradley are doing with your buttholes, I don't, I absolutely do not want to hear about it. I know that sounds stupid, and I remember telling my son's mom that at the time because that's who I was with at the period of time, and she's like, you're, a she just laughed because she's like, you're an idiot, obviously. But uh, I was not smart enough. I, that guy was my friend. I didn't think he would steer me wrong, but I, it almost kind of relates because. Like, I was just talking about it because I was wondering if people eat the butthole and the banana. You have to tell me, do you cut off the butthole and the banana? Do you eat the butthole and the banana? I don't eat it. It's gross. I don't want to. But uh, also, would you... It's, it almost relates back to the thing of like your friend being full of shit, too. You know what I mean? Like if your friend's training you on the job and he tells you that, do you do you know he's full of it? Or do you know you need to reanalyze what these are called? Or do you go to the next crew and be like, hey, guys, can you show me where the buttholes are at? I really need to know more about the buttholes. And they're like, dude, I, I don't want to work with you ever again. I'll be right back. I am back. Hopefully, I didn't keep you guys waiting too long. I I'm not good at waiting. I'm really not. Uh, it's it's not it's not one of my strong suits. I keep trying to teach my son that, but uh, he thinks I'm crazy. I'd be curious to see what you guys think, and maybe you're like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" But I have. Uh, you're like, dude, that. <laughs> <laughs> that ADD test uh, with the six questions. I'm sorry you didn't like the results, but I'm going to have to go ahead and say it's accurate. I don't have any problems with waiting. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't mean like waiting tables or anything weird like that. And you're like, dude, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think you meant that. You're an idiot. You don't need to describe that. My son, the biggest example I can say is like I'm trying to teach my son, like for instance, he'll be waiting for his mom, right? Like I've mentioned it before, but I pick him up after school and then his mom will pick him up at 7 p.m. on a th like three nights a week. And so uh, it's sometimes like for instance, she'll be like, hey, I'll be there in 20 minutes or, you know, I'll be there at six tonight. And he takes that, uh, you know, in, in like for, he take whatever, if she says that he expects, okay, right now I can start a timer. And exactly in 20 minutes, she's going to show up. She's going to be here. And I'm like, that's not always how it works. I'm like, I'm sorry. I, 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 I was like, I, what I do is I don't stop what I'm doing at all. I would prefer to just continue exactly what I'm doing all the way up until maybe they show up. Cause I just like literally pretend like I pretend like people aren't going to show up. I'm like, if they tell me they're going to be here in 20 minutes, I'm going to keep doing my shit for 25 minutes. And if they actually show up, they actually show up and I'll go out and do what they need to do. But I don't know. I had a friend one time that he was like, I would rather people wait on me 
and wait on them. And it was like, uh, I know that's terrible that saying it, it sounds really selfish. I assure you he was not selfish. He was one of the most giving people ever. And I say was cause he has passed, but I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a, it's a negative thing necessarily. Probably just cause it's tough to, it'd be tough to think about anybody in that sense, uh, in a negative light. But, uh, no, I don't even remember what the fuck I'm talking about. So it doesn't matter. But, um, yeah. Oh, I guess it's just Breck, Breck waiting for his mom. You know what I mean? Like when he's waiting for her to come pick him up, I'm just curious. Like, are you, I'm, I'm so bad at waiting that I would just prefer to almost pretend like I'm not. Cause if I sit there, it's almost like work, right? Like, doesn't it seem like if say, you know, you get off at 5 PM, if you, pack up all your stuff and you close everything down at 4 30 and you wait those last 25 minutes doesn't it seem like the slowest time of the day is those last 25 minutes like for some reason when you're sitting there watching the clock it's just an eternity and it just seems like if you can just if you can just continue what you're doing the clock will just continue to run you don't even notice it and then waiting is a lot easier and again I just my son thinks I'm a lunatic I can't seem to shed this wisdom upon him I'm just like I mean I, I waiting is easier for me when I'm occupied that's all I guess but I don't know we don't agree on everything you know what I mean as far as like if I tell him I'm gonna be there in 15 minutes I just show up in 15 minutes because I think that's easier and I've just <clears throat> I've said it before but truthfully my grandma and my mom just too many times either exaggerated or stretched their word and again I've even said like my sister said she would still do that to her kids now she it's just something people do to kids they stretch the truth or say things they're not supposed to and I think it just happened to me so many times that I I can't do it so like I can't do it so we he, you know what I mean? He just hasn't heard, learned the hard lesson that if you listen to what people say every single time that they say it, sometimes you're going to be disappointed. And so I'd just be curious to see, like, if somebody tells you they're going to be there in 20 minutes, do you just sit and look out your window for 20 minutes? Or do you stay occupied for 20 minutes? And it's like, if they show up, then they show up. But it's like, oftentimes people are late. I don't know. You're like, dude, stop. Nobody cares. But uh, I guess I was just saying, sometimes we disagree about certain things. Like, for instance, I'd be curious to see what people do in this situation. Like, do you guys... Um, I guess if you didn't have kids, it would be tough to consider this, but maybe, uh, yeah. Um, I don't like to talk about my finances with my son. I just think for some reason that it's crazy. I think that when you're seven years old, you should just have the right to wake up every day, not worry about anything, not have any concern about bills or money or anything like that. Like I... Sometimes I regret it because I feel like he has a complete unawareness of the value of money and the thing, the, the amount that things cost. But also it just seems like eh, eh, there's so much of your life that you're going to spend in, spend, what? There's so much of your life that you're going to spend worrying about bills. There's so much of your life that you get to spend taking care of those things. It just seems like the longest you can hold out, the better. And like, whereas like... You know, like an example would be like one time I had told my mom that I uh, I was struggling financially. You know, it's like I said, I've been poor. Everybody's been poor. Everybody's had times where they've struggled or where one time's been better than another. But then like it's, it's like, you know, one, I don't even really want to tell anybody that. And then two, she like told my sister and then she told my son's mom. And it's just like then my son's mom told my son. And then like so, for instance, something I would never, ever, ever tell my son He's then worried about, he's like, well, mom said you didn't have that much money. And I'm like, no, you know what I mean? At the time, I'm like, that's not, it's not something you need to worry about. And I just wonder, I don't know. That's just one of the things we've disagreed on, but maybe that's, yeah, that's why you should stay away from your exes. But no, that's just a different ex. That's, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, my son's mother, um, I don't know. Like I said, we, everybody thinks differently about certain things. I think there's obviously got to be an age for it. <laughs> There's got to be an age where you learn money and you learn the value of things and obviously chores and working and getting compensated with money is a way to learn about that. But uh, sometimes I just think the longer the longer I can let him hold out, the better. And I'd just be curious if anybody has any, you know, what did you, you know, did you wait till your kid was eight and then, you know, you threw him to the wolves and you're like, all right, buddy, $15 an hour or, or bust. You know what I mean? You got you to gotta make lots of money or at least start putting them on chores and stuff like that. I don't know. 
I know he can't be a kid forever, but I guess I try to try to keep him as honest honest as I can. Yeah, we've I don't know. Like I said, we we disagreed about all kinds of stuff, even stuff that didn't have anything to do with kids. Like I remember, um, we and I I'd be curious to see. Like, do you guys think uh, again stuff that well, I guess. <laughs> Sadly, I guess eventually it does have to do with kids, but uh, I just mean it leads to kids. Um, we had total different thoughts about things like uh, kissing as well, and I'd be curious to see what people think about like that. Do you, do you think kissing is a prerequisite in a relationship? Because almost my entire life, I thought it was. I remember my mom told me that um, when I was growing up, and again, yeah, if you've listened to anything else, you know that everything my mom shared with me wasn't correct. But uh, one of the things my mom shared with me, uh, I'm embarrassed because I, I, I realize how silly that sounds, and now I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't Oh, um she she had told me when I was younger she was like yeah my you're you know she told me my stepdad didn't like to kiss and I thought that was crazy I was like that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard he's such a fucking weirdo I was like why why would anybody possibly be like that but then when I met my son's mother she was the same way so she didn't she also did not like to kiss and I I was like I will never it's funny I remember after we broke up like uh, the first time I was like with a girl I literally thought I was like I, I, I bet I've forgotten how to do this I was like I bet I don't know how to do this anymore more. I bet because I don't know we were together for like five years or whatever so I remember like the first time I was with a girl I was like I I bet I don't even but no it's what it's funny it's like go oh, but tie in your shoe you know unfortunately not unfortunately uh it's one of those things that you don't forget you know what I mean it's like you could be out of for five years and then all of a sudden you tie your shoe and you know exactly how to do it so it works out but anyway I'd just be curious to see if anybody else thinks because like m- before my mom told me that, I would have thought kissing was a prerequisite in a relationship. And before I ran into that relationship myself, I would have thought it was a prerequisite. But it's just one of those things that, like, to even hear, like, you know what I mean? Can you imagine a relationship where that's not something you do? And years later, I've realized that was probably a red flag. And the fact that she was withholding affection was probably something I should have paid more attention to. And I should have realized that maybe <laughs> she didn't have any interest in me. And that's why she would have kissed me. But... I don't know. Again, I think it was just normalized by the fact that my mom, oh man, I think the camera just moved. I'm sorry about that. It was just normalized by the fact that my mom, uh, she had said that same thing. So I'd just be curious to see. I, as far as I'm considered now, I think it's pretty much a prerequisite, but have a prerequisite. But um, I'd be curious to see if anybody else has had that. Have you got into a relationship or started a relationship or tried to start a relationship where somebody's just like, no, nope, I don't do that. That's weird. And then obviously in our case, we ended up having a child, you know what I mean? Or my mom and his stepdad, they like owned a home together for years. So it's like it can happen, but... I don't know. Those examples both ended in peril. So hopefully it's not, um, I don't know. Hopefully it's not, uh, uh, you know, uh, you'd like to think that that's not what led to the demise of the relationship. You'd like to think there was some more to it, but, um, um, I don't know. You know, one thing I've noticed and I may be, well, obviously I'm getting nervous, so maybe I don't really know what I'm talking about here, but, uh, no, I had to like shuffle myself. So that makes me think maybe I don't have this thought completely together, but it seems to me as I pay attention to like, say, um, you know, like you're like, you know, paying attention to somebody's Instagram or, you know, like watching, uh, stories. It seems like women are more apt to pretend like they don't have a spouse and, and maybe I'm just crazy here and maybe, Maybe there's an obvious, I shouldn't say maybe there's an obvious answer. My theory is the obvious answer is, I mean, I don't know what the numbers are and I should look them up and be knowledgeable what the fuck I'm talking about, but I'm not going to, but you would think, okay, say, say it was easy numbers and it was like 50% of men, uh, or 50% of people are men and 50% are women. It's like, I don't know, obviously that's not true, but my point is obviously you wouldn't want to leave it open, uh, to everybody. Right. And it's like maybe by pretending like or excuse me by exposing that you have a spouse on social media you're going to get less of your demographic so say your demographic could be males of a certain age they're not going to be as interested in you if they see that you're um you know uh taken right it's like who 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 wants to uh, um you're not pursuing them in any way, but point being, it almost feels weird to like follow somebody when, or, you know, like, like all their stuff when 
they're taken, right? So, and this is just my theory, and I could be completely wrong. I'm probably off base, but I'd be curious to see what you guys think. Why is it? Does it? Or maybe it's just maybe it's just my theory, and maybe I'm wrong. It seems like women are more apt to pretend like they don't have a spouse. But then like when you really look down to it, you're like, oh, they're in a really happy relationship and they just do this for social media because it sells. And I was just curious, like, am I, am I crazy? Am I the only one? Like, I don't know. I know I mentioned like Whitney Cummings earlier, right? So she's got that, um, she'll be like, um, you know, yeah, I gotta, I gotta completely got to rework my act. I'm not going to be able to put this 30 minutes in. Uh, you know, I don't even know if I have a relationship. And then like you see her on her Instagram and uh, her boyfriend is spoon feeding her dip while she's laying on the floor with Ramona. And you're like, oh yeah, that's and she, Then the next day she's on her podcast and she's like, this is, I don't even know if I'm in a relationship anymore. It's completely not serious. I, you know, I have no idea if I even know this guy. And then like, you know, in her act, she's like, uh, or, or, you know, she's like, you see her on her Instagram and she, she's literally built a mountain in her lawn. She's like, yeah, this, this relationship's not real. Um, I had El Capitan relocated to my lawn, but, um, this relationship, I, I don't even think it's going anywhere. This is not serious. And it's just like, <laughs> it feels like if you, if you pay attention, I don't know to, to, to everything um, not not all the, the pieces line up together but again I think it's more of a I think it's more of a marketing thing I think it gets you more um, I guess when people think you're available sometimes I think that may be uh, better for your image maybe and, and maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm off base I'd be curious to see what you guys think do you think that people pretend to be single or act like they're more available than they are because it makes them more appealing um, or am I just crazy? Am, am I just reading it wrong? Because I'm good at that. I'm good at reading things wrong. I'm good at reading into things too much, too. Like things that just don't don't have any connection, and I'll try to pretend like they do. But, um, yeah, no, it's all good. I don't know. <clears throat> I heard a bunch of people like talking about that, uh, that um, uh, YouTube removing the like button. I mean, obviously, if you guys are on YouTube, you're familiar with it. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm... I don't, I didn't give a fuck. Are you, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it seemed like there was like people that were like up in arms at a time, but I guess it's just like their time. Right. Cause it's like, there was, you know what I mean? The YouTube had people complaining about, um, whatever I was just talking about. I don't even remember what the fuck I was talking about. You guys like, I don't either. It was boring. It was terrible. I, I don't give a fuck, dude. I have no idea. Uh, everybody was complaining about YouTube using, uh, or removing the like button. And then, um, Everybody's complaining on TikTok about which I, I mean I got to be honest as a parent I was kind of kind of concerned about it as well but like when that TikTok thing um, and it, it almost seems just further evidence that the it's literally there are people f I don't want to put my tinfoil hat on and I don't want to sound stupid but it is a Chinese created app and it just seems like one of the easiest ways to create problems for us in America would be to do it through our children and to do it through social media because people are so connected with social media but then everybody was complaining about TikTok about how like there was this new challenge for people to call in like fake ter like uh, terrible things like fake terrible things to their schools and as a parent it was really scary I literally thought about not putting my son in school that day I was like I it seems silly. I think that there was uh, schools in Chicago that literally shut down. I mean, you can look at that. Um, obviously, you could look that up, and I should have probably researched it better. But my point is, I mean, it just seems like every app has got some sort of thing that somebody's complaining about here or there, whether it be super severe or not. But um, I don't know. I just didn't really care about the dislike button thing. I don't mean to compare both of them. I guess I'm just thinking about both of them as, like, social platforms that allow creators to express themselves as far as, like, that being the connection between the two. Obviously, I don't think people calling in threats to their schools and things like that is on the same levels that this like mudden being removed. I guess I just want to feel like I have to clarify that because that's not that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say it seems like every platform has its complaints here and there. Um, but I just wasn't. I guess that affected. I'd be curious to see what everybody else thinks. Are you over it now? You're used to it. You're used to just seeing one thumbs down button. You're used to seeing, you can see the number of likes, but you don't. I get, people said like they was going to worry them for like not being able to see what videos they like or don't like. But I'm like, don't, doesn't your taste just tell you that? 
like I don't know about you, but I just I just turn a video off if I don't like it. I don't need anybody to tell me because there's 65,000. Even if I like a video, I don't look down at how many dislikes it has. And then like again, I guess the TikTok thing sadly did affect me. I shouldn't say sadly, but it affected me much, much deeper. I literally thought about not putting my son in school that day. But the more I thought about this, just like it almost seems more like if you were an intelligence agency, at least I can talk, at least I can speak. If you were an intelligence agency, and again, that app is originated in China, and I know I tried to tell my stylist that, and she was like, well, America bought it, but I think it's still a Chinese app, and I don't mean to put anybody on the spot, but it just... It's literally originated from a country that you would think, of course, has some benefit. Oh, shit. You're almost not even allowed to, like, talk about that, huh? She's... They would... You would think they have some benefit to have some intelligence of what's going on in our country. And if they were able to create some mass problem, and TikTok is widely used, and it's just like, I don't know, point being, that did affect me, and I'd be curious to see how many people reacted to it or if they even knew about it did you hear about it did you know that there was a day that there was some stupid challenge where people were literally supposed to do terrible things and it literally closed closed schools down and made me consider not putting my son in school for the day because it's so ridiculous but that's what i mean it just seems like so easily it's just inducing chaos i mean it's just it just seems so obvious like that's but i don't know did i overreact did you guys even know about it am i being crazy am i being stupid I don't know. Yeah, I, um, I, it's funny, I don't have much else. I remember thinking that, uh, yeah, it has nothing to do with anything. I, I remember, uh, yeah, um, I just have a story, but it doesn't relate to anything. So it feels like silly. It's like, why share this story if it has nothing to do with anything? But my thought is, um, I remember when I was a kid, we'd always like try to throw parties when our parents went out of town. So like anytime your parents would go out of town, you know, you'd obviously try to take advantage of the situation. And I got caught like every time. And then I remember one time I literally went so far out of my way as I took pictures of everything. Right. So like, for instance, I took pictures of the couch. So that way I would know exactly how the, the, the pillow were sitting I took pictures of the kitchen so I would know exactly how the everything was sitting so basically when they came back from their vacation we had put every single item back in the exact same spot that we had originally put it in um, but we got caught because uh, they found puke on the underside of the toilet bowl so I had even cleaned the toilet of course I cleaned the bathroom I cleaned everything but where the water comes out like where the water comes out in the toilet and it leads into the bowl they had found puke splash so when people had puked into my toilet because of course we were morons and of course we were drinking you know I mean yeah there's I, I have not thought about it in a long time and I don't have any nice way to talk about the stories so there was just some crazy times I remember we were so stupid like it was hard to get alcohol right so like there was this time where I met up with like my stepbrother's friend and my stepbrother's friend had Everclear and it was just like oh my gosh you can drink way less of this liquor and get just as fucked up so we would try to drink Everclear rather than say vodka and stuff because you could drink a lot less of it and get messed up and now I don't remember why I'm talking about this why am I talking about this oh yeah so for instance like we were drinking Everclear that night and a lot of people one it burns like crazy oh my gosh one time we were doing it with my dad which yeah he's a great example I've, I've talked about it before but <laughs> one time we were doing it with my dad and he lit it on fire and um, I don't remember why I if I was smart I could probably remember why but um yeah, I can't remember why, but for some reason, um, he threw it all over the side of his face. So for instance, he didn't get the, oh, I guess I'm missing some steps here. So my dad was drinking a shot of Everclear. My dad tried to show me when I was a kid, when I would drink Everclear, and I don't recommend anybody do this, but they would light the top on fire. So it'd be a flaming shot because obviously Everclear is so flammable. You can just light the top. Well, he missed his face. And so he poured this hot, ever clear all over the side of him and his entire body was on fire but um, 
Oh, I don't remember. Oh, yeah. So, like, we just, anyway, point being, a lot of people are not used to it. They're not used to the effects. But also, like, it will just burn like a mother. And I just remember people acting absolutely stupid in my house last night. Not last night. That night when I was a child in a house that got bought. I, I don't even remember 2010 or something. You know what I mean? Like in the, my point is I haven't even, um, another family has owned that house for like 11 years. So it was not last night. I misspoke by saying that last night, but that night, um, we just drank so much that people were puking everywhere. And so I remember we went through all the efforts of like literally taking pictures of every item in the entire house and putting everything back and our parents still caught us because the splashback of people puking on the area where the water leads into the toilet bowl. And they were like, why did you puke so much? And they were like, we know you had a party. You know what I mean? Because it's like you can't explain that. You can't be, oh, I had the flu. I was so sick, which I did try to give them stories like that. Dude, I remember one time I was so stupid. I was like um, basically scared to try to dispose of my bottles. I was like scared to try to get rid of um, – our uh, trash so like over an extended period of time I had collected like probably I want to say like conservatively like, probably like 10 Admiral Nelson's bottles and so all of them were just under my bed and my mom found them all at one time so it's like it's not the worst thing that she ever found she found so many terrible things and it's just like why wouldn't you just throw those away like people are smart they would take it out in their backpack or you know what I mean that's just my first thought is like if you're a kid and you have a backpack you could easily just sneak them out of the house one at a time you don't need to build up until they're 10 but i don't know yeah i have uh i have no uh i have no stories about that about my son yet which i'm lucky i don't have any i i, I hope when he becomes that age yeah that they're just doing something else because i just don't think i can be like my dad i don't think i can be like trying to drink you know obviously i wouldn't be lighting my face on fire but i don't think i can be like drinking with kids too many times he let us have people over and again his he had that terrible mentality where he was just like if you can if you can drink in my house that's better than you drinking out there and i don't know because he just yeah my point is i wouldn't do that but i wouldn't do a lot of things that my parents did and i think it's a completely different time too one other thing i've noticed is like uh, you just don't know how like you have that choice to like take off whether or not um things are listening to you like i i'm almost convinced that I shouldn't say I'm almost, I'm, I'm a hundred percent convinced that my phone's listening to me and my tablets and things are listening to me all day, which is completely okay. Cause I think everybody's used to it by now, but it's almost kind of funny sometimes because like you'll put, um, you know, like you'll have, uh, if, if you don't, if you don't have it on, like for instance, if you like, I've turned it off right where I'm like, no, you can't track me. You can't listen to me. And then the, the things you get are just like, you're like, you got the wrong guy. Like these ads are just not meant for me. Like this is, it's funny. I, I, I almost wonder if you, they, they hear you talk about things that you don't even realize you talk about, but you know what I mean? Like I'll get like offers to like, you know, a membership to Sato shape Michelle, you know what I mean? Like a wide membership or they'll be like here, buy this gigantic. Yeah. It's funny. I like, I do have kids. I have talked about wine before. I guess it's not crazy, but my point in saying it is like, sometimes it's, it's either completely off. And I guess those were not good examples, but there's other times where it's like, it, it almost doubles down on the shit you hate. Like my, I feel like my phone hears me and, and you just have to let me know if you guys experience this as well, or if these are my absolute personal ads. Sometimes I feel like my phone hears me talking about like my, I want to lie about it, but the easiest way to talk about it is just to be honest. I have, um, what do they call that body? Um, where you, I call myself, I, the easiest way to think, I call myself fat all the time, right? It's terrible. It's probably for my son to hear it. It's, it's terrible. I try to talk to him about it because I know I'm like, I'm going to give him a complex. I clearly have a complex, um, but I call myself fat all the time, right? And then your phone will give me these ads and they'll be like, cool sculpting. And it, like, it doubles down on the shit that I hate. Like, I'm sitting there, like, hating myself, feeling like a fat piece of shit. And it's like, do you want to get signed up for cool sculpting? And people are like, probably 
probably like a dude like what section is just really um, uh, popular these days they send those ads to everybody or people are like no man I get I get McDonald's ads they don't tell me to cut my fat off my body but <laughs> I don't know it makes me feel uncomfortable it either it either makes me feel like wow these people are who are these ads for these are not for me or like it just doubles down so hard on the things that I hate that I'm like I don't know. It, it's almost worse, right? It's like whatever I felt about myself already, whatever I felt about being a piece of shit already, and then now it's like, do you need to cool sculpt yourself? Would you like to get the tummy tuck? And I'm like, I'm going to kill myself now. But No, I'm just kidding. I will safely, safely be back with you guys next week, and I look forward to talking with you then, and I love when you tune in, and I love you, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.